Throughout history, a portion of society has quite actively participated and even thoroughly enjoyed various forms of public executions. Whether it's a thrilling fight to the death at the Colosseum, burning witches at the stake, or simply destroying a celebrity's entire career over a tweet posted 10 years ago, humans are just naturally drawn to barbarically sticking giant straws into whoever's currently painted a public villain and collectively drink their blood and tears in one thirsty go. So if your idea of teaching someone a lesson is for them to lose their entire livelihood, careers and dignity, as well as be completely excommunicated from society, then this episode is right up your alley. I am Boogadi Exploded from the Bow City, and this is an extremely Bogart take on cancel culture. Let's go. Oh, and please don't cancel me. As you can see, I'm just contractually obligated to read the script written by... Views and opinions expressed by Bogart the Explorer from Davao do not reflect the official policies or positions of Comedy Central, Viacom, and all... All right, fine. Good thing I brought my YouTuber apology video starter pack. Mates, if you're still completely unfamiliar with the term cancel culture, then I do suggest you crawl out of that rock you're underneath over to catch up. Because you're either what kids today refer to as a boomer, or you're likely stuck in a deserted island with a volleyball as your girlfriend. The latter, of course, being the one that's a lot more socially acceptable today. Either way, cancel culture, as defined by Merriam Webster, is the practice or tendency of engaging in mass cancelling as a way of expressing disapproval and exerting social pressure. Or as the Urban Dictionary likes to put it, a phenomenon due to the internet's highly dogmatic hive mind, where the opinions and attitudes of the public are harmonised into one giant unanimous blob. And what began as a more than necessary and well justified way of holding institutions and people in power accountable has often devolved into a senseless form of social media mob rule. And let me tell you mate, this mob takes no prisoners. Gone were the days of innocent till proven guilty. Because in today's wild west of social media, it's most definitely guilty till proven innocent. Or at least up until the crowd's collective goldfish memory is activated as soon as Taylor Swift drops a new album. Go Taylor! We've also gotten to a point where there's now very little, practically no room left for anyone's redemption arc. As if the thrill of serving justice has just become too delicious that the internet mobs are never satisfied. In fact, nowadays, even apologies aren't even accepted anymore, as you're more likely to be cancelled again for having, well, a fake apology. Don't get me wrong, mates. I completely understand the need for publicly calling out archaic institutions or holding certain people in power accountable. But more often than not, this just goes on for far too long and gets too absurd that the mob could care less on what happens after or whether it even makes sense or not. Pretty much like the Fast and Furious series, like what's next? Fast 10, your seat will. Plus, no one's safe these days. Take family friendly show Paw Patrol for instance, a program where a bunch of workaholic dogs save their city while performing human jobs. Seems harmless, yeah? Nah, because during the height of anti-police protest, not only did a Twitter mob trend the hashtag defund Paw Patrol, but several individuals also called for euthanasia of one of the Paw Patrol puppies, who just happens to be a policeman or police dog. Police, man, dog, man, dog connected to the heart with the surgery and everything. Fact of the matter is, shaming and humiliating people is not limited to the rich and famous as most of the victims of this culture are actually not powerful people. They're often everyday folk who may never recover from the harm of being socially destroyed or losing their jobs, their career, their families through boycotts of their work or disciplinary actions from an employer. Deserved or undeserved, people like Ellen DeGeneres and JK Rowling can actually take the hit in the financial aspect and will eventually recover. They don't exactly have the kind of job that they can be fired from, especially in the middle of a bloody pandemic. I mean, what are we gonna do? 
I have Dumbledore kick Rowling out of Hogwarts. I think we can all agree that cancel culture can bring much needed justice to minorities and the traditionally disenfranchised. But what I want to remind you all is that it's also beginning to reflect how having that kind of power can also practically corrupt anyone, even those who started out with good intentions. A force for good when aimed at the right targets, but an absolute horror when placed in the hands of a bloodthirsty mob. Besides, not everything you don't like should become an instant war cry for justice. We have to constantly remind ourselves that just because we're offended doesn't mean we're right. And that if we continue going down this destructive path, there might be nothing left. Or maybe, just maybe, instead of a race to deplatform people, maybe we can listen and discuss for once. And if we really must cancel something right now, I suggest we simply cancel cancel culture itself. Or if we as a society aren't ready for that yet, then maybe we can just cancel stuff that we can all benefit from. Like, I don't know, five day work weeks? I mean, why work five when you can work four? Come to think of it, why not three? How about two? two. That's it, two day work week. That's a hashtag I'm totally down for. Two day work week. Oh, tua lang ka dalawang trabaho ba? Naka mag... Pago ago kayo ba? Apil naman. Two day work week. 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 It's okay. Two day work. Shh. Two day work. That's it for me, mates. Thanks for watching, and before you go back into the hunt for the next celebrity to cancel, make sure to see more of these fun videos, and be sure to hit that like button and subscribe. Cheers!